Hello everyone. I uh, just wanted to share with you all, since we're back online here, uh, just a quick thought for the Holiness. And uh, since it's getting close to Christmas time, I wanted to share with you all a hymn, uh, a Christmas carol uh, that is well known to many people, and to share, go through each verse and talk a little bit about the biblical basis and the ideas behind the Christmas carol. So we're going to pray, and then we'll take a look at uh, Christmas Carol tonight. Father, we thank you uh, for your word. Uh, thank you for Christmas time when we can remember in a special way how you loved us so much uh, that you sent your son, Jesus, to come to this earth to bring hope to a hopeless world, a world that had rejected you and was... Uh, facing the penalty that, that we all deserved. But thank you that you did not leave us in our hopelessness and in our sin. But you sent Christ that first Christmas to give us hope, uh, to give us salvation. And I pray that as we look at this hymn and think about the truths from your word that it talks to us about, that uh, it might help us that each time we hear it and sing it, we might remember these truths and be even more grateful for who you are. In Christ's name, amen. So the hymn I want to talk about tonight is actually uh, one of the oldest Christmas carols. Uh, it's based on a poem that was written probably in about 700 AD. Uh, though that is not the form we sing today, a lot of the ideas from this Christmas hymn uh, were based on that poem. Uh, later on, uh, it was translated to a lot of different languages, and uh, the one that we sing today is based on a, a version that was in Latin and then translated um, into English in about the 1700s. And the hymn is based also on uh, something that we call Advent. Uh, so Advent is what a lot of different denominations celebrate the month before Christmas. They go through uh, different ceremonies and different things. Uh, Baptists don't usually do as much with Advent as others do. Uh, but the idea is they're getting ready for Christ coming. That's what Advent means. It just, it just means someone's coming. And they would have a lot of special ceremonies. And one of the ceremonies they would do is they would have uh, seven different words, names of Jesus, that they would recite and start with O each time. They were called the seven or eight O's. Um, that they would recite talking about Jesus' names. And uh, this hymn is based on those uh, seven or eight O's. And the hymn is called, I'm sure all of you have hold of, heard of it before, uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Or in Spanish, O Ven, O Ven, Emmanuel. And there was actually a lot of different versions of this. There's actually a couple different translations and a, a lot of different verses, up to seven different verses. But most hymnals have just uh, four of the verses, so those are the ones we'll be looking at today. And really, uh, the theme of this hymn uh, is based off of the Old Testament and how Israel was looking forward to the fact that Jesus was coming. And we know that as you look at the nation of Israel, God had chosen them to be a light to the nations. God had chosen them to be able to bless them, then use them to bless the rest of the nations. But sadly, instead of taking advantage of all of God's blessings and, and enjoying that special relationship they had with God, they chose to disobey Him again and again and again until finally they were taken into exile. And they were in exile for 70 years, first under Babylon and later under Persia. And there were the people that were in exile thought, Basically, all hope is gone. All of the promises that God made to us, he's forgotten about. And we have basically messed everything up. And now we're in darkness and in exile and in slavery to these other nations. And there's no hope for us. But even during that time and before that time, God made promises through the prophets and told them, even though you've disobeyed me, even though you've failed me, um, I will send someone to fulfill the promises I made to you uh, to first Abraham and then later through Moses and then later uh, through David that one of his descendants was going to reign over the throne of Israel forever. And even though it seemed like for Israel 
all hope was lost. They were living in a very, very dark time. The very few who believed God's promises knew that even though everything was dark now, one day that Messiah, that anointed one, that Christ would come and would free them from their exile and would fulfill those promises to Abraham and to David and would be the king that they had been waiting for, the anointed one, the savior that they had been looking forward to. And that's what this hymn is based off of. And the first verse says, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. So, it's talking here to Israel, talking to them before Jesus came, talking to them when they're in exile, when they're in slavery, when there seems to be no hope. And really the whole theme of this song, we could say, is when all is hopeless, look to Christ for hope. Look to the Messiah. Look to the Savior for hope. And it says, first of all, we can find hope in him because even when we're enslaved like Israel was, because of our sin... Christ is our only hope for freedom. And that's what this song is saying. And it's based on really two passages. First of all, in Isaiah chapter 7, in verse 14. And it's interesting, in Isaiah 7, Isaiah is talking to a king here. And this king um, has been a sinful king, and, and God has told him that he is God and he should obey God, but this king did not want to listen to him. And Ahaz said, God says, let me show you a sign to prove to you that I'm God and that my promises will come true. And that if you obey me, you'll be blessed. But if you reject me, you're going to face punishment. And, and Ahaz said, no, I don't need a sign. I don't care about God. And God said, well, whether or not you want a sign, I'm going to show you a sign. And his sign, he says in Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive something that's impossible, biologically speaking. And bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel literally means God with us. God says, I'm going to prove to you that I'm God, because I'm going to do something that's impossible. I'm going to have a virgin that's going to give birth to a son. But even more than that, that son is not just going to be any human. That son is going to be God in the flesh, God with us. And that God will bring the salvation that only he can bring to Israel. But before that happens, uh, God says to Ahaz in verse 17, before that happens, when, when before children can even grow up to be full adults in just a few years, God was going to punish them and he was going to take them into captivity. And that's exactly what happened. But he said, you don't have to despair when you're in captivity because I will provide a savior. I will do what no one else can do. I will do a miracle and I will become human. God himself would dwell with us. And that prophecy is fulfilled in Matthew 1, 21, when the angel comes to Joseph and he says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So when it seemed like there was no hope for Israel because of their sin, they were enslaved in exile, just like the song says, it says, they mourn in lonely exile, God appears, and it says they will ransom, Emmanuel, God with us, will ransom captive Israel. A ransom is a price you pray to free someone. And Jesus, when he came as God in the flesh, and found Israel, who was still in captivity, this time to Rome. But even more importantly, all mankind was in captivity, and still many, we are in captivity to our sin. He came to free us, to pay the price, to free us from our sin, so we don't have to mourn in lonely exile. We don't have to keep on sinning. We don't have to be enslaved to those bad choices and bad habits and to that, that sin against God. Christ came, God with us, to free us from our captivity so that we don't have to mourn in lonely exile like Israel did. 
but he fulfilled his promise in sending Christ so we can rejoice because Emmanuel has come. Just like those in exile could rejoice because God was going to come, Christ was going to come to free them from their exile. God has come in the form of Christ and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, like John 1 says, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he has provided for us freedom. So when there seems like there's no hope, we're stuck in our sin, we keep sinning and sinning and sinning and destroying our lives, God sent Christ to free us, to ransom us from that sin, just like he did for Israel. So when we are enslaved because of our sin, Christ is our only hope for freedom. That's what that first verse teaches us. And the second verse goes on and it says, O come thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. So this passage, um, this second stanza is referring to Isaiah chapter 11. So we looked at Isaiah chapter 7, now it's moving on to another prophecy for Israel. Not only can we see when Israel was enslaved, they can look forward to Emmanuel coming to free them. In the same way, when we are enslaved because of our sin, our only hope for freedom is in Christ. Christ is our only hope for freedom. But then the next thing we see is in Isaiah chapter 11. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So the second verse talks about the rod of Jesse. Uh, the rod here, like it says in the second part of the verse, is a branch. The idea here is Jesse was the father of David. David was the king. And, and God had promised to David that he was going to have his descendants reign forever over the house of Israel. But after many years, as the kings sinned more and more and more, finally God took them into exile and there was no more king. And it was like that that tree of David, that tree of Jesse had been cut. And now all that was left was this dead stump. And to Israel, it looked like there is no hope. We will never have justice again. We will never have equity. We will have to be under the, the tyranny of Satan. We will have to, to be under the condemnation of God because of our sin, because we've rejected God. We will no longer have good rulers. Instead, uh, we will be under condemnation to have bad rulers. But God says, even though that stump looks like it's dead, a little sprout is going to sprout out of that stump and it's going to grow into a full tree again. And that little sprout, that little branch, that little rod that's going to come out of the dead tree of Jesse is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. And what seemed completely hopeless that we were never going to have a good king again, we were never going to have a king from the line of David, we would have to, to live under the tyranny of Satan, condemned by Satan uh, and under Satan's tyranny, it says there, O come thou rod of Jesse, the descendant of David, from the tree that we thought was dead. Free thine own from Satan's tyranny. We no longer have to have Satan as our king. Be under the condemnation of God. But instead, we can be freed from the depths of hell and be given victory over the grave because we have a new king. And that king is Christ. Jesus, the descendant of David, who will reign forever over Israel and over all the earth and bring true justice and equity and free us from our condemnation. And that's the second thing we see when we are enslaved because of our sin. Christ is our only hope for freedom. And when we are condemned because of our rebellion, Christ is our only hope for forgiveness. 
He is the only one that can become the king that will free us from Satan's tyranny. Because we rebelled, we didn't want anything to do with him, just like those kings of Israel. And we got cut off, and we had to be under Satan's tyranny. But through Christ, we can have forgiveness. Through Christ, we can have the king of kings, the, the descendant of David that will bring true justice and will be the best king ever, freeing us from all the wicked leaders. Just like Israel looked forward to that, we look forward to that. And we thank God that he did send Christ and Christ will return and will reign over the earth from the throne of David forever. What seemed hopeless, that broken stump, dead stump of Jesse, now has a branch, a rod growing out of it that brings us hope that we will be free from the tyranny of Satan and have forgiveness for her rebellion and be able to live for Christ. So we're going to stop there for today looking at just the first two stanzas. And next time we'll look at the next two stanzas of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. But as we sing this song or as you hear it on the radio and other places, remember when all hope is lost, when all seems hopeless, like for Israel when they were in the exile without a king, without a leader, under evil tyranny, Christ is our hope. Look to Christ for hope. Remember Christmas and the fact that when we're enslaved because of our sin, look to Christ. Christ came to free us from our sin. He is our only hope for freedom from our sin. He came to ransom us just like he ransomed Israel. And when we are condemned because of our rebellion, thinking there's no hope for us, we're, we're condemned with Satan, we're beginning to be ruled by Satan, there is hope because Christ came for forgiveness and be able to live under the, the righteous king forever as we subject ourselves to him. So when all is hopeless, look to Christ for hope. And think about these words of O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. So come, Thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel.